this video, we're continuing our conversation on the lawsuit between the class action lawsuit between the residents and uh, the surviving uh, family members of Champlain Tower South against uh, the various parties. In particular, we're still talking about um, their portion of the lawsuit against the developer of 87 Park, their next door neighbor. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about how 87 Park came to be and a little bit of that background history so that you can kind of understand more of their claims. Um, in the last video, we talked about the vibration damage to the building, but in this video, we're gonna talk about why was the street vacated? Why was the building built so close? And what other damages is this lawsuit alleging? So it, out of the lawsuit, uh, I think one of the things that kind of drives um, this, this video home or, or, or sort of brings this to the point is, is some of their claims here in the lawsuit uh, that the lawyers wrote up. So it says, uh, first, the developers of 87 Park improperly obtained the right to build higher and larger than originally entitled. So this is the allegation from the plaintiffs uh, to the defendants, which is in this case, the developers of 87 Park. So they state that they included uh, by buying a public street, just a few feet, feet from uh, Champlain Tower South, remember CTS stands for Champlain Tower South, uh, just a few feet from their foundation. Then they undertook destructive excavation and site work dangerously close to CTS, sloped their project so that water poured into CTS and corroded its structural supports, and drove sheet piles 40 feet into the ground, causing tremors and vibrations. So the tremors and vibrations and the sheet piles we talked about in the previous video. This time we're going to talk about um, getting this uh, street and how they constructed and, and, and the history kind of behind that because it's pretty interesting. Okay, so in the lawsuit, they go on to give us a little bit of history, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of history on top of that. They state that uh, in November, on November 24, 2014, uh, there was a development agreement between the City of Miami Beach and Terra, which again is the developer of 87 Park. As alleged, as alleged above, the Terra defendants agreed to expend funds and construct uh, the beach access walkway and to pay the City of Miami Beach a, quote, voluntary monetary contribution of $10.5 million dollars in exchange for the right to expand the 87 Park project and to build upon the then existing 87th Terrace. So to give you guys some perspective and understanding what we're talking about, here we have uh, Champlain Towers South, which we're all pretty familiar with that geometry and that layout. Um, and then here you have the original uh, hotel. Okay. And um, uh, Terra Development purchased this hotel and they purchased uh, this land over here as well, okay? But they did not purchase, at this point when I, in my conversation, they did not purchase 87th Terrace. So 87th Terrace was essentially a public right-of-way, which included parking, a sidewalk, and path out to the beach for the general public. And that is this area is covered here, and this is the area that they're contending uh, that they did not obtain legally. Uh, that's that's what they're alleging. Uh, they did not obtain this um, ethically, legally, however you want to say that. To give you an idea uh, and to kind of show you what happened to 87th uh, Terrace Street, you can kind of see the way it looks now. It's pretty much gone. Um, Google Earth will still show you uh, that it says uh, 87th Terrace there. Um, but there's actually just a sidewalk, okay? And that sidewalk is essentially right along this area here it's about 10 feet wide okay all the rest of this now is uh is 87 park it's part of their property part of that development in that condominium now they go on to say that by acquiring 87 terrace the terror defendants so talking about this street and then talking about the acquisition which we'll get into a little bit later uh the def terror defendants could add almost half an acre to the footprint to their property, increasing the density, they can build additional units and essentially maximize profits. Uh, again, there's no law against maximizing profits, but the attorneys want to kind of point out, uh, I, I think they're sort of building up to, to, uh, to what their, their point is. They do say that Florida law, however, does not permit the purchase of a public right of way. Uh, to avoid this legal impediment, the terror defendants retained attorney, attorneys to devise a creative solution. Now, I'm not an attorney, I don't know uh, if it's illegal to purchase a public right of way. Um, but I am able to explain to you how they did obtain this right of way. And uh, I'll leave it to, to you guys to determine whether you think this is legal or ethical or not. So the terror defendants lawyers crafted a plan whereby the city would vacate 
the 87 Terrace right of way in exchange for a quote voluntary contribution of ten and a half million dollars. So the, what the way this is worded and what it means is essentially the city, the, the uh, let's back up the hotel property and the and the property that uh, Tara had purchased technically included 87th Terrace Street. But the cities and, and, and municipalities and counties, they, they have what are called right of ways. So they have a right to your property. And in this case, they had a right to the north end of the property whereby they could put um, 87th Terrace, that parking in that street. And so what they did was the city essentially vacated its right. They gave up its right of way of that area and essentially gave that land back to the original land uh, 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 owners perpetuated down obviously through all of the contracts and mortgages throughout the decades uh, which essentially basically gave that street right of way to Terra. Now in exchange for this Terra gave a voluntary contribution to the city of ten and a half million dollars. Now it it, it it sort of lends some credence to what this attorney is saying who, who drafted this um, who drafted not this this uh, deal uh, with the city, but rather who, who drafted this lawsuit that we're talking about? Um, he's saying that it you know it was basically done illegally and that Florida law doesn't permit this. The way that the city vacated the thing the the street 87 Terrace that right of way and the way that Terra purchased it sort of seems to lend credence that it's it wasn't a normal typical transaction. Uh, this the attorney goes on to say, of course there was nothing voluntary about the Terra defendant's payment to the city. 87 Terrence Terrace uh, would not be abandoned until the Terra defendants paid the money, all ten and a half million to the city, which the city insured by appointing an official to oversee the transaction. So they're arguing that it clearly was a business transaction. You're, you're, you're getting something and you're giving something, right? You're getting 87 Terrace and you're giving ten and a half million dollars. Um, but the way it's done with the way they vacate and do a voluntary contribution to the city is interesting because there's a, this, this has a couple of strange implications and I'm not uh, uh, claiming that this occurred or that this is illegal, but I'm just saying if it's illegal, this, this creates some interesting uh, complications. One is, is that, um, that the IRS essentially could be interested in this because if the voluntary contribution of $10.5 million for the right of way, which is essentially a purchase of something, um, isn't taxed, right? This could be of interest to state authorities and government authorities and federal authorities. The other thing that could be interesting is when you do a voluntary con contribution to a city, municipality, nonprofit organization, government entity, the police force, if you're going to contribute money to some sort of local agency, you are typically going to write that off as a charitable donation. So it'd be interesting to see if Tara actually wrote this $10.5 million off. And if they didn't pay taxes on the right of way, and they got to write off the ten and a half million. That sort of double dipping in what we call a sham transaction, which the IRS is very much against, obviously. Now, the hotel we're talking about here, um, by Terra, was a Howard Johnson Hotel. But this this is a this is an older hotel. It, it's it's that Miami modern architecture style. But it wasn't because it was on the north end of the uh, of the island of, of Miami it really wasn't part of the rest of the historic district and therefore really wasn't adopted as a historic building. And so what happened was, was um, in December of 2013, Tara purchases, so that's the developer, they purchased this hotel and the adjacent land that we talked about before where the, where the uh, parking lot for this was. So right adjacent to 87 Tara Street. By May of 2014, uh, the developer gets 87th Tara Street and they also get their height restriction for construction lifted from 60 feet to 200 feet, allowing them to build a much larger building. All of this, of course, was in exchange for the $10.5 million of voluntary contribution. Now, as soon as they got all these things, you can see in November, just a few months later, November 2014, they petitioned the commission and the city commission approves to go ahead and let them demolish the Biltmore Terrace Hotel. Um, and this, of course, outraged a lot of the community in North Miami who really wanted to see this hotel uh, restored. And so what had happened was at the time, the developer had uh, gone around and, and, and held town hall meetings and things like that with the neighbors and had essentially convinced them that, hey, uh, if, if, if you let us give you ten and a half million dollars, 
we will uh, uh, take over 87th Terrace, obviously, and we will uh, build our condo building between the hotel and Champlain Tower South. So you see, now we're getting back to Champlain Tower South. So we're going to build our hotel between those, and we're going to restore the Biltmore Terrace Hotel. But then, just a few months after being granted all these things that the, that the developer had asked for, the developer turned around and said, um, no, actually, we want to go ahead and demolish the Biltmore Terrace. Um, this is just based on the historical records that I have available to me on public record. I'm not asserting that anybody did anything wrong. Um, but that's sort of the, 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 the chronology, the history of this. And so... In that November 2014 uh, city commission meeting, um, you can see here the the mayor of the city of Fort Myers of uh, of Miami Beach. Um, he 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 was also confused about this even at the hearing where they vote this in. So take a look at this. I mean, I was always under the impression that part of this deal was that that whole hotel was going to be renovated. Um, uh, I'm just not so sure at the last minute how in the world we ended up where the hotel's being demolished kind of like a curveball um, and and we're we're we, we, we're working to move forward with some type of historic designation of a architecturally significant MIMO design why are we allowing this great hotel to all of a sudden be taken down like at the last minute and so you can see the sentiment from the public mimicked the mayor's sentiment in this particular uh, um, uh, message that he was giving which was this sort of seems like a, a, a change, you know, a change of plans and a change of attitude. We had already approved to go ahead and let them build this condo building and preserve and, 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 and uh, restore the hotel um, to a nice updated standard. Um, why are we now going to let them completely change their plan and demolish the hotel and build a much bigger building? So that was sort of his question there. Uh, one of the audience members, though, uh, uh, um, questions, you know, she, she's she's questioning, she represents one of these owners in, in the North uh, Miami Beach area, and she's questioning um, the, uh, the, the prudence of doing this uh, demolition of the hotel because they would like to see it restored, the people in North Miami. Um, and, uh, and what I wanted to point out in this next clip is sort of this interesting back and forth that she has with one of the city commissioners who clearly and obviously establishes that the developer bought the property. So listen to this. The question here is, you have given that developer a street, you have given him- We got 10.5 million, that's height inaccurate. That we haven't given him We don't anything. understand why that was not even voted on by the public, it wasn't a public hearing. Who knew that that street, it's all given away and it was given away on the basis of what was presented by Alan Shulman. That's just, and that's nobody just you're, you're lying ever to us. Knows. You're lying because it no, wasn't I given away. Lie. It was 10 I don't and a half lie. million. It was 10 and a half million, so you're just not telling the oh, truth. 10 and a half million, that's fine. But it was no, but, not I mean, on the basis of demolishing. No, the public should know that you're not telling the truth. And I don't like to fight that you're with you, Jonah, in public. If you had meetings with the public, perhaps we could discuss this. I just don't I know you don't have. It's just you. Oh, it's just me. So in this video clip, you can see this back and forth where the city commissioner is calling a member of the public a liar. Uh, the member of public, though, was using accurate language in this statement. She stated that the city gave, essentially gave them the right of way, which is true. Because if you go back and look at the court records, they gave them the land and the developer gave them $10.5 million dollars but this wasn't really a transaction, right? Because uh, 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 falling in line with, with this lawsuit, that would be against Florida law. So it was an interesting workaround, but her, her language is actually correct. But the commissioner sort of gave up the, uh, if you will, and, and just sort of revealed obviously that, um, that this was obviously a transaction. We, he said, we bought it for, or uh, they, they paid $10.5 million for it, right? So it's pretty obvious that way. And you can see that around this time, a lot of people in North Miami were, were protesting this. You can actually see uh, Champlain Tower South here in the background, people on the street uh, trying to protect and defend the hotel. So the design that was proposed, um, which got all of the things that, the, that they wanted, the extra height, and they got the uh, street and everything else was this design. And so here is the Biltmore, Biltmore Terrace Hotel. Okay, and this was going to be 
87 part condo. Okay, and then and then here you can see Champlain Tower South to the left side of the image. All right. And so I think one of the things that's really interesting about this is this is what was presented to the public. This was what was presented to the city commissioners. And this is what, you know, this is sort of the plan that changed because obviously if any of you have seen any of the, uh, have been around uh, Miami Beach, North Miami, you'll know that this is obviously not what got built, right? And they went ahead and demoed the Biltmore Terrace. But if you look at this on its surface, they took all of the parking from Biltmore Terrace, which was next to the hotel, they're taking that and they're constructing this building which essentially would give more living space and create a higher demand for parking. And there's no, there's no parking on this. I mean, even if you put a small parking garage here, you're not going to fit all of the cars that are necessary. So I don't know. I mean, I would have to see more detailed drawings on this plan, but this doesn't look like a feasible plan that was ever going to work anyway. Um, and I just want to kind of show you that image again. You know, we're talking about all this parking. And their plan was going to go away. All this public parking was going to go away. And they were going to somehow squeeze this plus the extra parking that they were going to need for the hotel all on that same footprint. It doesn't seem very realistic to me. And of course, we all know that this is what uh, they ended up with. Here's 87 Park. And here is the remnants of 87 Terrace, which we kind of pointed out before. It's just basically a 10 foot wide sidewalk now. So that kind of gives you the history and some of the background. And now what the, uh, moving now into the details. So they get the road, they get 87th Terrace, and they do construction work right up to the edge of Champlain Tower South. In the lawsuit, this is a photo again from, from, the, from the filing. They state that 87 Park's excavation against CTS's South Foundation Wall exposed and caused extensive damage to the base of CTS's foundation wall. So in the next part, in the last part, discussing the, um, the residents' lawsuit against the developer of 87 Park, we're going to take a more detailed look into exactly what these damages are that they're alleging, how they conclude that it is their fault, and how that all plays into that part of the lawsuit. Well, thanks for watching.